Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 53. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Business 210 Chapter 4. If you're in the class, just don't go to our Chapter 4 website. Hey, we're talking about the rules or the laws of probability. We're going to start off with the complement rule. Now, if the probability that you get two heads in three flips is 0.375, that's two, right? Three flips. The only possibilities are getting zero, one, two, or three. So if we know the probability for getting two, all the rest would make up the rest of the sample space. That is called the complement. So anytime we want to calculate the complement, which would be not get two heads in three flips or get zero, one, two heads in three flips, we simply take one minus whatever the probability of that event is. So the complement rule, very convenient, 1 minus that. And we have all the rest. Another rule we're going to need to know is the adding rule, the adding uh, rule for probability. But it's very important that you know what mutually exclusive means. Remember, that's dating only one person. <laughs> uh, no, it means events have no sample points in common. That's what dating only one person means. But the adding rule, the adding law, we take the probability of A or B. So it's A or B. I can't point to that without it popping up. You can see what I'm pointing to right there. A or B, we then take the probability of A, add the probability of B, and we have to subtract so we don't double count the and. Now, right, our first example, we're going to have mutually exclusive events. Down here, we're going to have events that are not mutually exclusive. And for adding, you always have to be sure to subtract so you don't double count that overlap. So that's that first rule right there. Ah, but if they're mutually exclusive, you simply add probability of A and B. Let's look at our example, arrival of uh, an error uh, line arrives either early, on time, late, or canceled. So from our sample, we got these uh, frequencies. So we can go ahead and calculate our probability. Ah, but we should add them up first. Alt equals and add them up. Now we can highlight all these cells. And in the active cell at the top, we'll calculate our probability for these mutually exclusive events. Notice the picture. Can you be early and on time at the same time? No. So we'll take that one divided by this one. This should be familiar because this is relative frequency. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that and control enter. I'm going to come down here and add them up. Alt equals. So there it is. Um, both of our requirements for probability, each one of these individually is less than 1, greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1, and they all add up to 1. So now we can calculate some ORs. What's the probability of early or on time? Notice we can't do AND here because there is no overlap. Uh, but early or on time, we simply add equals uh, this one plus this one. Now, what about not canceled? Ah, this is the complement rule. Here's the the uh, not cancel the canceled right there. So for n not canceled, we just say equals one minus that particular uh, probability right there for that event. Finally, what about uh, early or late? Equals this early plus this late. All right, so we that one was easy. There's no overlap. They're mutually exclusive. Only dating one person. All right, let's move on to an event that has uh, some overlap, means the events are not mutually exclusive. What does that mean? Oh, they, ha they share some sample points in common. Now, here's our example we did in our last video, travel survey of people who visit Seattle. So the people who visit the Space Needle, we had a probability of 0.45, visit Pike's Place Market, 0.65, and visit both. That means both of them, 0.25. So uh, we got to be careful. If we want to calculate the probability of Space Needle or Pike's Place Market, we're going to have to add these two and subtract the intersection or the and, that little piece right there. So we simply equals this plus this and then minus that. Why? Because we don't want to double count. 
Now be sure in uh, textbook and lots of problems they just say things like visit at least one. That means the smallest it could have been is one. Well in our case there's only two so it could have been one, this one, or that one, or both. Uh, now the next thing topic is a conditional probability, so we're going to come over here and see how to calculate this. This is our experiment we talked about last video of pulling a queen from a deck. So we have uh, total cards in the deck, 52. Queens in the deck, 4. First we want to just pull one and see if we can get one queen. So the probability for that is simple, and this is without replacement. So we're going to pull a queen without replacement. We're not going to put the card back in. Then the uh, events would be uh, independent because they'd have no effect. The sample space would not have changed. By the way, conditional probability, uh, the probability that event, an event, given that uh, another event has already occurred, the sample space changes. All right, so this one's equal. We, uh, easy, we say equals our four cards divided by our 52. And we get a probability of 0 0.07962. So uh, if we don't have any uh, trying to pull one queen, that's it. But now, what if we want to uh, pull a second queen given that we've already pulled one queen? Well, this is a single event. We've already pulled that. We're sitting there with the cards in our hand, right? We have that first queen. So now there's three queens left and 51 total cards. So it's simply uh, 3 divided by 51. Now we're in the lucky enough position we have two of those queens already and we want to ask uh, what's the probability of pulling this third queen given that we've pulled a second queen and a first queen? Uh, well, again, we're sitting there with the two cards, so it's simply uh, uh, 2 divided by 50. The sam both the numerator and the denominator have changed each time. Now, what about going back to the beginning, right? And you're saying, now, what's the probability of pulling 3 straight? Well, now, uh, we'll go over to the sheet called M for multiplying. We know our rule for multiplying is, and that keeps popping up, oh, well, th there's our rule for independence, right? The occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of the other event. And our rule for independence, of course, is probability of B equals probability of B given A because A had no effect on B. I uh, wish I could. Um, I deleted that comment and put it down here. So there it is right there. Ah, here's our multi multiplying rule. Oh, and remember, multiplying is the and, the intersection, that little piece, that little overlap. So and, A and B, equals probability of B times probability of A given that B has occurred. Or uh, we could go this other route and say probability of A times B given that A is a curve. Of course, if they're independent, then you just multiply probability of A times B. Now our uh, card question here, we've already calculated one, two, three. So what do we do? We simply multiply. And if you multiply it all out, it would be exactly like that. But we have the numbers, so I'm going to say equals this times this times this. Better be pretty small. And it is. Pulling three straight would be pretty hard to do. Now, there is a function in Excel that will do this for us. So we don't have to go through all of these steps here and then multiply them. It's called the hype geom dist. We'll talk about this distribution later in the class, but we're going to use this built-in function to calculate our probability. Now, you got to give it four inputs. It needs car uh, the total size um, of the population, the total number of successes in the population, right? Because our population has four queens, and then the sample size, that's how many cards you pull, and how many successes. We want all three success. So we're going to go equals hype, and it's uh, this one right here, hype, hype geom dist, sample S, that's this one right here. That's going to be our number of successes that we want from our sample. That's why it says sample S for success, comma, uh, number in the sample, that's going to be our three. Population successes, that's what that little S means. There's four, and 
Finally, the number in the population, the 52. Enter, and it calculates it for us. So that's the uh, multiplying rule. Multiplying rule here, we had to be sure and get our uh, uh, conditional probability subsequently. But now, let's look at our uh, second example here. These, This is our example we saw last video. Probability that the Google stock goes up next year, uh, 0.2. We've estimated to be that. And we've also estimated that the whole foods market stock going up next year is going to be 0.35. By the way, I'm shooting this in what? Uh, two, uh, July 2009. Boy, Whole Food has been just crushed in this recession. So maybe it is time due for a, a big upswing. But the probability is, is 0.35 that's going to go up. Well, we're going to assume that these are independent. These uh, two stocks are not too interconnected. So how do we calculate the AND, the overlap? Uh, the probability of G and W, you simply multiply. These events are assumed to be independent, so boom, that's all we do, 0 0.07. All right, when we come back in our next video, we'll do kind of a comprehensive overall problem. All right, see you next video.